this episode, hip hop superstar Russ is in the building. This is Gary Vay Nerdchuck, episode 265 of the Ask Gary V Show. And the amount of music I consume from the man that is sitting across from me right now should be illegal. I am like, the amount, the way I play music, I play it so, I play it out. I once listened to Bone Thugs and Harmony, first of the month, 8,000 times in a row. That's amazing. Uh, Russ is in the building, Yo. superstar. Uh, I love the stories this man tells. I'm excited you're on the show. Thank you. Thank we got you to chop it up with dinner the other night. Yeah, you and yeah, your yeah. crew. I loved it. Yeah. I hope you guys fine. enjoyed it. Uh, Andy got real sick. Threw up all over his fucking face. Really? Yeah. Really? He, he, only, from, from the food oh, or yeah, from he liquor? Did, he didn't he, he literally wasn't at work yesterday, which is like unheard of. He was dead. Andy? <laughs> <laughs> and now you're back. I'm back. Wait, was that from the sushi? It had to have been I was like I was it was a great night, come home. Laid in my bed, two minutes, in the bathroom for the next seven hours. So instead of throw, talking about a ton of throwing up and things of that nature, Russ, yeah. for the Vayner Nation that's watching right now, mm-hmm. let's go into the origin story, right? Okay. Give us a little bit about who you are, what you're about, what you're up to these days, and then Facebook, if you're watching right now, put in your phone numbers. We're gonna allow you to call in and talk to me and Russ in a minute, but first yeah. I'm gonna start with you, my man. Why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself? Uh, I mean, this, this is a, like a real come up. You know what I mean? This is 11 projects dropped and then 98 songs on SoundCloud dropped uh, and then the debut album. So it was like really, really long process to kind of get to the starting line. Yes. So, uh, you know, it just feels, it feels long overdue, but it feels like a blessing because, you know, uh, it feels like it's the platform I always wanted to start fucking shit up. Yes, the music world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Specifically hip hop. Absolutely. So take me all the way back. Where were you born? I was born in New Jersey, yes. the caucus. Jersey in the house. I knew I wanted that part in. But take us through that progression. Yeah. You so, around a little bit or what, yeah, ended I mean, up in Atlanta? My mom and dad were like, my mom was born in uh, Brooklyn. My dad was born in Jersey. They lived like their whole 20s, everything up north. Um, I moved out when I was a baby, but was still kind of like raised with that northern yeah, mindset kind of. Um, so moved to like North Carolina, then to Kentucky, then back to North Carolina, then Georgia. Um, but I did my formative years, my 12 through now in Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. And so with a little bit of that East Coast flavor. Right. And how did that like, tra- and so when did the hip hop bug kind of first catch you? When did you it's realize? Super early. Yeah. When I was like seven, I was just, I remember uh, listening to Get Rich or I Try in and, uh, Eminem and I had a notebook that. Uh, I would like write raps in that were just ridiculous raps. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> like I saw a girl, she's gonna make me hurl, yeah, like shit like that. Yeah, yeah like, okay. ridiculous stuff. And I was like, <laughs> like impersonating Andy. 50 Cent, you know what I'm saying? Like uh-huh. I was trying to say that I was from Queens, all this crazy stuff. <laughs> um, and I would, you know, stand on the, like stand in the living room and like perform the raps for my brother who I uh, just had. older? Yeah, my older brother. And like it was, I think that was really the inception of everything. And then what happened? You get in Atlanta, you get settled yeah. in, and mm-hmm. what do you, you're always just into music, or are you into sports, you into other shit? Like, yeah, what are you I mean, into, comic books? Like, what are you into? Yeah, no, I was always playing basketball my whole life, and I think basketball and hip-hop is kind of synonymous. Yeah, of course. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, parallels, but uh, I moved to Atlanta, and it was, a, it was a weird thing, because I was coming from North Carolina, where surprisingly, it was actually way more open-minded than where I was at in Atlanta. Like, I was going to school in North Carolina with N1 basketball clothes on, Jordans, and a earring when I was 11. Okay. Right? And I moved to Atlanta, and it was the first time I heard the term wigger. And I was like, <laughs> what is, like, what? Yeah. Um, so I was like, naturally, like, you know, I'm 12. I'm the new kid. I'm like, yo, people have their cliques. They're about to go into high school. And, like, at a social survival, I was like, all right, let me ditch all this shit. Let me, put on what, let me put on what y'all got on. Interesting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of On course. some social survival sh- uh, I get it. shit. So um, I did that, but then I was still going home and making beats. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, after I left high school, I kind of like just went back to where I was at. So your high school years, you kind of like just, you know. It was like a shell of myself. Interesting. Yeah, but I did that to like make it through. It makes sense. Yeah. That's a, you know, it's funny. I don't think enough people talk about that. Yeah. First of all, I'm thrilled that you share that. And I think it's yeah. something that to bring into my world and the show we're on here, so many people right now are in jobs or went to good schools. Mm -hmm. My version of what you were just talking about is the kids that were entrepreneurs that when I grew up, 
went into good schools because that was the move. It wasn't the move of like, like, it, like when I was a kid, yeah. it wasn't cool to be an entrepreneur. Right. It meant you were a fucking loser. It means that you weren't good enough to go into a good college. Yeah. And, and I watched a lot of people, because I was always purebred and in it, conform into the school system, even though I know they got a bigger high of selling stuff yeah. or try to build something, but they just kind of, and it's just an interesting parallel. Yeah, no, I mean, I, and I think, you know, I'm not ashamed of any of that because it was all necessary for the growth and part of the process, but um, yeah, I mean, I get it. It was like, you know, if you look at pictures from me in high school, you're gonna be like, yeah, what the fuck, like, yeah, wearing like a polo shirt yep. and like, you know, whatever. I never did the Sperry shit because that was just ridiculous, but <laughs> um, but you know, I was doing that, like I said, because I was the new kid and I was just trying to, it. like, you know, I get it. What about, what about, what about, wh why do you think mm -hmm. I like your music so much now that you've gotten to know me a little bit? I'm, I want to, I think the message 100%, which is just like. Fuck it, do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Of course I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I also, I also, for me, just like the chip on the shoulder thing. Yeah. Like, like anytime you're, like the Kurt Warner line, you know, yeah. like your grandfather rolling in his grave, like the yeah. stuff that you talk about is like, that. that's what I would, yeah. you know, I, I just, it connects with me. Do you get concerned uh -huh. or how do you think about what you're going through now, right? Yeah. Like when, when Andy kind of first brought you up two years ago, you were coming up, you were coming up, you were clearly at a different level and well on your way to the next level. Do you worry mm -hmm. that a lot of your engine is the chip, is the fuck it, I'm going to do it myself, right. I did it myself, fuck you, you passed on me. Do you worry that... Yeah that this making it now and the next version of you making it yeah. take some of that away and can change shit? No, because it's not being driven by an external force. It's more so being driven by, I have to prove it to myself. Yeah. I, I need to get a Grammy, not to prove to y'all that I can get a Grammy. Yeah. I need to prove to myself that I can get a Grammy. And as a young guy, you're about to turn 25. Yeah. Do you, do you think about the world changing, like whereas a Grammy 15 years ago or... Th I think about this a lot. Like, so I talk about I'm gonna buy the New York Jets. Yeah. But then sometimes I'm like, man, fuck that. I'm gonna buy four esports teams, and that's gonna be the NFL in 20 years. Yeah. Do you like think about things like a Grammy that way? I've been curious to ask artists about like yeah, certain like, right. Is the value like, still yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Like I get it. When you were 12, I'm gonna win yeah. a Grammy, and then you wake up and you're 25, and you're like, is the Grammy the same shit than it was when yeah. I was 12? Do you think about that stuff? I sometimes, but then you yeah. still want to like kind of fulfill that childhood fantasy you know and even for your parents kind of stuff like I do that stuff for my parents sometimes like I want to be on magazine covers kind yeah. of weirdly more because I know my mom is smiling cheek right. to cheek yeah some yeah some shit but a lot of it bro a lot of it is just intrinsic motivation of just like yo I gotta do this shit to prove to myself you know what I'm saying that's that's why like I didn't lose steam when shit got popping that's why I still kind of have the same mentalities because this isn't even like even as much as has been accomplished. This is not even like you haven't cool. even started. Yeah, I'm just like you know. It's funny you saying that, and I had a I did a podcast yesterday, Paul, uh, this podcast, and we basically talk about competitiveness the whole yeah. time. And it was funny because I was doing his podcast talking only about he's like asking me like why I'm so we're deep into my competitiveness, and and it, in the. You, now sitting here with you thinking about the dinner the other night yeah. like that was my favorite part I'm like he's just competitive yeah super competitive you know like like I don't know like 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 did you cry when you lost at basketball when you were like eight or nine probably yeah I used and, to cry and, all the time anytime I lost at anything nobody yeah. wanted to play with me because either I won or if I lost I cried so much it was just awkward well and, <laughs> and the thing with me like <laughs> let's get our phone Facebook put in your phone numbers we're gonna take the first call in a I minute would, I would always I would always play you know basketball against my brother and like it, I was so competitive. He wasn't that competitive. And my mom would like, you know, be sanctioning this shit. And she's like, chill out. It's not that serious. You don't have to be yeah, so yeah, competitive. Yeah. But it's like, I don't care if it's just like a game. If we're just playing fucking horseshoes in the backyard, I have to win the fucking game. Yeah, to me, the worst people on earth are the people who want you to chill out when you're competing. Yeah. Like, I hate that shit so much. <laughs> like, it's not that serious. For you, fuckface. <laughs> For me, this is fucking life. This ping pong match is my fucking life right now. I know, it's I mean, that's here. where I'm at with that. All right, who we got first, Sandy? John. John. John from where? Minnesota. All right, we're going to get to John in Minnesota. Cool. We'll see what he has to say about entrepreneurship or music. We'll see what he's up with. And it's like, you know what I mean, though? Like, if that ping yeah. pong match, I'm like, fuck it, I want to win this more than, like, fucking anything. Literally, it's like the fucking world championship at all times. John, don't miss your moment. Oh. John, this is Gary Vaynerchuk and you're going to Ask Gary V Show with Russ. 
No shit. <laughs> yes, sir. No way. Yes, sir. What is up? Life is good. What's your question, my man? All right. So this is for both of you guys. Uh, so what's the number one thing you wish you knew when you're starting out? So I'm 18. And what is the biggest lesson you learned when you got on the new level? Cool. Russ? Uh, what's the biggest lesson I learned to, to follow your yeah. gut, to always just follow your gut. You know what I'm saying? A lot of shit is going to distract you. Uh, there's opinions that you may uh, look up right. to when you first go into it, but right. you realize they don't know shit. Absolutely. Follow your intuition. You know what I'm saying? Listen to your gut. It's never wrong. And it knows what the fuck you want before you do. For me, for me to right. answer the first part of your question, the one thing I wish I knew when I was starting out is the thing that I preached to you guys all the time, and even though I believed it religiously at the time, even though I was 100 on it, I would have been 110 on it, which is patience. Facts. When That's you're so, awesome. when you're, when you're yeah. hungry, mm -hmm. when you're 18, when you wanna be the biggest in the world, when you wanna be the biggest in the world, like, it's patience. I'm, I'm 41, right, about to turn 42 in November, so it's not as, you know, I, used to, I don't know if you play this game. John, John, is it? John, I don't know if you play this yeah, game. John. When I was 18, John, this is what I would play. I'm like, okay, I'm 18. And in 18 years, I'm gonna be 36. Mm -hmm. That's young as shit. I have my whole life in front of yeah, me. Everything yeah. I just lived, I have all that time in front of me, and I'm still gonna be 36. And I would do that literally, literally. Even at 30, I remember doing, I'm like, fuck, I've done a lot already. Wine library was already big and everything. I kind of made it a little bit. I was like, and, in, and I've got my whole life, yeah. and I'm gonna be 60, yeah. which is old, but not fucking dead yet. <laughs> but now, but now, I'm four, now I'm 41, and I'm like, okay, I've lived this whole life, Okay, in 41, I'm gonna be 82. I'm like, mm, 82 is a little like, you know, like, you know, and so for me, even with that, even with the game that I've played my whole life about doubling up my number mm -hmm. to make me realize how much time I still had, so fucking be patient, do the right thing. Shortcuts kill you, like, do it right. Even now, even though that doesn't sound as good, yeah. I, I still do it. The fact that you're 18, John, which means you're double your age, you're still five years younger than me, that's fucking insane. And the thing is, you yeah. are so quick to be put on, to showboat, to win for yourself, for the world. Whatever it may look like, it usually leads to the move that keeps you away from winning. Awesome. The shortcuts yeah, yeah, I just are, want to say thanks. Yeah, my pleasure, man. Also, I want to say thanks. I've been on you for like two years, and you've definitely helped out with my business and everything. So, And Russ, I've been with you for about a year, so... Thank Thanks you, bro. We appreciate, appreciate it, man. That. Let's get let's get a bunch of calls in because it's hard to get to Russ. People can get me, but <laughs> Russ is tricky. You know, he's cool. So, like, Russ, <laughs> what, where are you at in your tw in, in your patience world? Right. That's something that I learned heavy because I used to get fucking beat myself up. Mm -hmm. You know, like, why the fuck isn't this happening? Why isn't this happening? But then you realize when whatever that thing that you were like frustrated that wasn't happening, when that thing does happen, you're like, oh. Right, I'm those so are the glad pieces. it finally happened now and not back then. Which song did you put out before it happened or in the earliest of days was the most that you when, that you and your crew were like, this is going to be, this fucking Friday, this, this is going to be it. This yeah. is good. Which, I mean, you probably did that every week yes, knowing you because I do it every, literally. I, literally every time I go on stage, yeah. I'm like, I'm going to say something in this keynote that's going to be watched 800 million times on Facebook. <laughs> I literally say it. No, Shit never happened. But, <laughs> but I feel it exactly every time. I, I feel yeah. it every time. But what I do, I, you know, it's funny because I'm asking myself that. There is a keynote or two ago, not too long ago. I'm trying to think somewhere something. But do you have one song that you were like, like just more than the others, that like, and it didn't happen? No, every song I literally thought was going <laughs> to be the it, biggest song it. in the entire world. Yeah, <laughs> like, I totally <laughs> like, get it, man. Every it song. makes so much sense to me. Yeah. Talk, talk to me about how you, so I know how I view hip hop. I've said a bunch, hip hop rules the world. It's the cultural seed. We're gonna answer this question, but I'm gonna ask you how you think about entrepreneurship okay. from your perspective this way versus my way. You know what I mean? Ashley, Ashley? All right, Ashley's about to get real excited. Ashley, don't miss your shot. Hello? Hello? Hey, Ashley, it's Russ. Hey, Russ, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Ashley, this is Gary Vee. You're on the Ask Gary Vee Show with Russ. Hi, Russ, how are you? Hi, Gary. I'm Hi, amazing, Ash. how are you? How you doing? I'm doing good. What's your question? Uh, this is awesome. Um, so I want to ask, um, I'm already... Ashley, Ash, you... Ash, real quick, you, your phone chopped up a little bit. Can you get into a better spot? Uh, sure, hold on. You got it. 
She's so Can calm. you hear me? Of course. She was so calm. Ashley, by the way, your composure it is, is incredible. Astounding. <laughs> What's your question? You. Um, so I am a talent buyer from Albany, New York. And uh, I guess my question for you, Russ, is what has been your best experience um, with the music industry as far as like a concert promoter? And what made um, what made that promoter stand out for you? Um, and what can I take from that uh, to make my concert a great experience? I always I always like the promoters who were super uh, tangible and really like they were personal with you, and they really felt it felt like they cared and they were hands on. There was an issue; they weren't kind of just like, "Oh, fuck off, good luck." You know what I mean? It was like they really gave a shit. Everything was run smooth. It was professional. But it's always been the people that I actually meet. You know what I'm saying? A lot of promoters, they don't even like, they'll maybe shake your hand once at the end of the night and say thank you. But like, that's it. You know what I'm saying? But you know, there was a promoter in Albuquerque, I think, that uh, super epic. He was just really hands on with everything and really, I could tell he cared. So you just got to show him that you care. Awesome. Cool. Ash, thank you. Ash, Ashley? Yes. Ash, I. Re- there was, my favorite book I ever wrote was called Thank You Economy, and in there, you like that, Russ? Uh, in there, I talked about something that nobody ever tweets or talks about, and I still think it's my number one move, and I think you can leave with it. Everybody's super nice and accommodating and caring before the show. Like, what if you booked Russ, and then five months later, just sent him, like, you know, his favorite candy or flowers or a note and says, I was just thinking back to when you performed up here in Albany. I really appreciate you giving our region a shot. Right. We loved you. Like everybody does everything up front. Everybody's giving flowers and jewelry. It's post game. It's when you've been married for 13 years. It's after the yeah. fact. Nobody is surprised and delighting and delivering when, when it's after it happened. But what happens is when Russ is at a festival hanging with seven, 12 other artists that are on the come up doing their thing and they're just kind of shooting the shit and randomly he drops how you, you did something like that. We're just taught, you know how things come up. Then all of a sudden everybody's paying attention. When you do something with no expectation in return, with no obvious short term ROI, there's always far greater impact. It's one thing if you get your girl flowers on Valentine's Day, it's a whole different thing if you get her flowers on June 19th. Thanks. Right. Yeah, awesome. You got Thanks, it? Guys. You um, got it. My company name is Delirium Entertainment, so if you wouldn't mind checking us out on uh, social media, that'd be great. You, you got it. I love the hustle. Nice little right hook at the end there. I, exp- I appreciate it. So Entrepreneurship. Calm. So calm. Entrepreneurship. Right. How did, when did that like hit your radar? Like, How do you view it? Do you feel like it's on a, do you see so much of it in hip hop and music? Do you, is it been interesting for you to watch managers and artists talk more like businessmen, not yeah. and women, not just about the music? Where, how do you feel entrepreneurship is sitting in culture? Yeah, I mean, the entrepreneurship was kind of like ingrained in me because, you know, Pop Pop, my grandfather, uh, passed away. He had his own business. My dad tried to start his own business, and I was just kind of raised with that, like, like that's the way you did boss it. mentality shit. Um, and then even my friends, you know what I'm saying? Like me and Boogus, we started Diamond, which is the, um, the company that's going to, you know, it's turning into what it's turning into. So, uh, what is it turning into from your perspective whole bunch right of now? Shit. Like just the, it's the holding I mean, company really, of all things that you're going to do yeah, in the future? Yeah, I mean, I think at, at some point it's just literally like a, uh, it's a brand that a whole bunch of shit can exist underneath. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it can be a fucking store where you sell merch at. It can be a fucking this or that, whatever it is. But, I get it. You know what I'm saying? But An uh, infrastructure framework. Absolutely. Who's this version? Persia? Yeah, what up, bro? This is Gary Vee on the Ask Gary Vee Show with Russ. Yeah, that's crazy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that was low-key, that was low-key excitement. <laughs> well, you're on my man, you're on my man. Go ahead. It actually is low-key excitement. <laughs> <laughs> I can Yo. see it, I sense it. What's up? Yeah, so, uh, well, first off, I wanted to say thank you to you, Gary, because you used one of my songs in one of the Daily Bees. Actually, shout out to D-Rock, that was dope. Oh, um, man. Good job, D-Rock. But, <laughs> but my question is for Russ. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I'm a I'm an artist too. I actually, we have a lot in common. I'm Sicilian too. We're part Sicilian. Dope. And uh, I've been uh getting curved by blogs, so fuck them. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm dropping. But, but no, I'm dropping songs like every week and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And, you know, just doing trying to get content out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was wondering. Like, so when you were dropping songs, I'm talking about, like, in the beginning, not, like, after you already picked up momentum. Was was there anything, like, marketing-wise 
that you did to try and implement, like to try and bring attention to your songs or anything like that? Like, yeah, any, there was. Any, like, marketing? I, I used to, um, I used to take like selfie videos of me in the basement studio singing along to the song that I just dropped, and for whatever reason, they would just go crazy on Twitter, and I would do it like. And every how many fucking Twitter? Week. And I know what he's asking here. How many at that point? Twitter followers did you have just to make it contextual? Fucking uh, 7,000, 8,000. And where are you at right now, Perfect? I'm at 10,600. Oh, yeah. Perfect. I mean, so 10,000. I remember when I hit 10,000, I was like, yo, we ain't going to be broke no more. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I think I think what's interesting about what, uh, what Russia said, and we were with what? That backpack kid yesterday, right? Uh, you know that little fifteen-year-old that's in the Katy Perry, all that that dancer from Atlanta too. Like, nonetheless, both of you just said the same answer, which is I have done a lot of things in my career, content-wise, that was more methodical about understanding the platforms and the context and the things of that nature in the new iteration of myself. But my rise in two thousand six, seven, eight with Wine Library TV, no growth hacking, no smart anything, just the content. Right. It wasn't like you got people to get it shouted out, or you figured out the algorithm, or you figured out how to be the top of a MySpace page, like we did Boyd when we used to do yourgrills.com, Paul Wall shout out. We we a lot of people just win on the content. A lot of people think that you can't win. Right. When you've got 3,000, when you've got 200. Mm-hmm. This kid had 300 followers on Instagram when he put that dance video up. 300. Okay. So the content works. The problem is for so many watching right now, you make the same exact kind of content when the market has told you it doesn't work. You've got to mm-hmm. mix it up, right? Like for example, like, right. like we need to make a black and white episode of Daily V. We need to make a silent film version of Daily V. We talk about it, but we haven't fucking done it. So like even me at the game that I'm playing at, I'm not experimenting enough, in my opinion. Everybody out there needs to experiment. Yeah. You just one time did it, singing to your own song, right. and that became the thing that you answered this man's question with. Right. And, you know, you got to keep in mind, bro, is that, especially with music, people love to see, like, almost uh, the insight to the person who really did the song. So, so when they see you singing your own shit, what I think, why it resonated is because it's like, oh, shit, like, he really did make that song. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it kind of... People want to see behind the... The cloak, right? Yeah. People want to see the other oh, side. Exactly. About that, though, Go about ahead. that with what you just said, with, okay, so like, say you were doing those videos, right? It yeah. wasn't like a moment where like you just, like, like all of a sudden, a hundred thousand nah, people just get nah. up your SoundCloud. It was just like, it was gradually. It gradually you happened. Just doing videos. Yep. Okay. My, my man, Pers- my man, do you understand that the far majority of people that have a viral hit, that they are a one hit wonder and it's over? That yeah. everybody else, <laughs> like that Russ and I's narrative is far, far, far more the common, which is one day at a time, 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 and then 40 fucking years later, you look back and be like, oh shit, we made it. It wasn't the 10,000 followers on Twitter. Facts. Right. Got it? Yeah. My yeah, man. I appreciate Good that. Luck. Yo, Thanks. I want to say, um, Russ, I'm going to... I look forward to meeting you one day. And Gary, if you're still doing this show, by the time that I'm on, I want to be on this shit. My man, so. I'm going to do this show for the rest of my fucking life. <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you soon. Can't wait. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next question. Russ, like, when, when <laughs> I mean, when you, when you think about what's going on in music and content and culture right now, this is a left field question. We didn't talk about this the other night. I haven't brought, what's interesting outside of like music, like what, what about a product or a, a TV show or like a clothes, like what's like kind of popping for you? What's you know really, really dope? What's happening ahead. is Netflix is taking over because Explain. no one is trying to watch commercials anymore. Commercials are dead. You know what I'm saying? Like, people can literally, like, watch Netflix without the shit. And Netflix kind of has, like, the same model almost that I have, which is throw it all up at once, yep. binge the whole shit, and people will become a psycho fan instantly. Yep. It took one season of Orange is the New Black for people to be like, oh, my God, I'm a huge fan. Same shit with Narcos, because once it came out, it wasn't... Do you I, mainly only consume Netflix? For, for the most part, yeah. Because yeah. you got to think about it, right? When you watch Narcos or when they release the whole season, you get to watch the entire shit. There's no more of this, you got to wait till next week for it to drop, yeah. next week for it to drop. Which some of that shit still works, like Scandal and shit like that. But Netflix, I feel like, is taking over because you get it all at once. You digest the entire shit. You instantly become so attached to it. Mm-hmm. And then like you're just waiting for the whole next season. But you're more excited because you know that when it comes out, you're getting the entire season. Mm-hmm. So I think they're... I think they're killing it. 
And do you and do you think about do you think that there's a, a white space for you know how people you know listen obviously you're a pioneer in dropping the song a week kind of thing. Do you think there's an opportunity for people to drop an album a week if they can put out that volume? Yeah, hundred percent. Future just like pretty much did that for three weeks. And yeah, got crushed. Yeah. Who's this? Luke. It's Gary V. You're on the Ask Gary V. Show with Russ. You're chopping up, my man. You there? Yeah, hello? Yeah, Luke. Yeah, what's up? This is a big crazy Fuck. Luke, you're chopping up. We're going to try you one more time. Get into a different spot. We're going to try to go to Luke one more time. Um, foods. What are your favorite foods? Italian food and my mom's food. Like her cooking it? Yeah. But you're on the road a lot. Yeah, but I just find the fire Italian spots. I have like an uncanny, <laughs> insane ability to find the best Italian restaurants in every city we go to. Luke! Yo, what's up? You like Italian food? <laughs> what's up? Do you like Italian food? Yeah, I love Italian food. Love it. Well, we're starting off on the right foot. Where are you from? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm from Rochester, New York. Love it. What's your question, my man? Um, okay, let's see. I got a couple, but I'll just ask one. Um... You always say, you always say to be patient, but then um, you always say that you're going to like act as if you're going to die tomorrow or tonight or whatever. Macro patience, macro patience, micro speed. It's a contradiction, right? Mm -hmm. So what I mean is on a global scale, I'm going to always care about my reputation and my name and how I'm viewed in history. So you have to be thoughtful and patient. But on a daily basis, for 18 hours a day, if, if I have to go and meet Russ and be out to two o'clock in the morning like the other night, I'm gonna squeeze in every fucking moment of every day that I can, so on a daily basis, I'm on fire, right? Uh, Russ, typical fucking hip hop star, late today, we're fucking, che- you know, fucking maneuvering <laughs> shit, I'm on calls, they walked in, I'm on big client thing, I gotta step out, we gotta fuck. I'm already thinking like, fuck, we gotta finish this real quick, cause I got 17 other things. Like, on a daily basis, I'm on fucking fire. On a macro basis, <laughs> on a macro basis, <laughs> I'm super calm. I'm like, it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. If today wasn't the day, and if this wasn't the piece, so yeah, exactly. I absolutely believe in that, and I understand why it's difficult. It's why I got to the macro patience, micro speed, day in and day out, like it's your last day, year in, year out, like it's forever. Right. So like, just another point on that, and please, and Russ, but I'm not sure where like where you're on on this whole thing, but uh-huh. like, so for example, why would I? Why would I? be patient in the sense with like, for example, money. If I want to go out and do something kind of materialistic or, or buy something, why would I wait? Like, why would I, like, why would I wait? If I say, if I die tomorrow, like, why wouldn't I go out and do something where I wouldn't? You understand what I'm saying? Of course you wouldn't. Like if you want to go and buy stuff, that's fine. The question is what, right? right? So I always tell people what, like, you know, one of the biggest mistakes people make is they buy a bullshit version of what they really wanted and that's why they got fucked up. You can buy a million dollar home or if you were patient and put that money back into your business, 24 months later you could have bought a seven million dollar home because the equity that you put in would have, and the behavior that you changed when, when you're sitting with debt changed the business behaviors. If I didn't buy a fucking house on the Upper East Side apartment back in the day, I would have probably poured more money into Facebook and Uber and guess what? I fucked up. <laughs> That's right. why. So, so, so here's why. If you're building a small, and if you're on a smaller scale than I was at that point, if you buy a ten thousand dollar watch, that means you didn't spend ten thousand dollars on shoutouts on Instagram to build up your fucking meme page or your fucking brand to then be able to buy a hundred thousand dollar watch the next year. Facts. Right. So if you really fucking need it, Mazel Tov. But if you're kind of don't, you need to debate. What are you gonna do with that money? Money. What are you gonna do with it? You can invest it or you can turn it into something that depreciates. If you need it to floss and get girls, then Mazel Tov, do you. But if you don't, then you need to debate what you can do with that money to get you more. Like, what do you want? I'm well, asking, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, this is an interesting conversation. Like, what do you wanna buy right now? Why, what are you debating? Um, I don't know. I guess it's, I guess it's more like I can either Here's an example. I can live with my parents, or I can get an apartment. Or, Why would or, so? Let's let's play it out. Do you want to get your apartment? Do you have a girlfriend? Yeah. So do you want to get an apartment so you and your girl can have a place, and that would be a better quality of life? Um, so let me give you the little background. She's at a college right now. We're in an incubator startup program here. 
Um, and I, I just feel like it'd make more sense. It's about two hours away. So I think it'd make more sense for our business. And I mean, obviously the added bonus of being near her, but the incubator, we have office space available to us right down the street. Um, that's just kind of the, the background. Yeah, I mean, to me, I mean, there's so many variables here. Like, I get it. Like, I'm empathetic to that. Like, to right. me, it depends on how hungry you are about your business. Because if you're hungry about right. your business while your girl's in college, I take advantage of the fact that your girl's in college so you can work 24 hours a day in your business. Because right. if you move and block away from her, you're not going to be spending 24 hours a day on your business, right? True. Yeah. <laughs> My advice, get rid of the girl. <laughs> kidding. Not really. Right. You're not, not really. Kidding. You're not kidding. But, but you know what? Let, no, because actually, a lot of times people, play that well, out. Well, because people get complacent a lot of times in relationships. People start gaining weight. They go to shit. Their dreams get put on the back burner because they're too busy fucking and going on dates. Yep. It's like, you know what I mean? No, but you know what's funny? Russ coming from Russ's point of view, like, and I love it, but it's an interesting point of view, right? Because like all of this has to be thought out, but like right now you're trying to scratch an itch of being close to your girl, which is super awesome. And I'm sure she's watching. What's her name? Sheila. Sheila's fucking thrilled right now. She's right? very proud of it. Very me. proud. You know, but like you need to think about what that all means. And to me, like there's a bunch of variables. We're not living your guy's life, but clearly it's cool to see that you're going in a direction of investing in that relationship, and that's phenomenal. If this is, becomes the mother of your children, all this, there's a lot that you should invest in those things. But life's about choices. I'm also very curious about, in life, a lot of times you're forced into choices. You're not forced into this choice right now. The situation is allowing you to play it out any way you want. Do, are, do you believe in the business that you've started? Yeah, absolutely. Like, like completely, like religiously? Absolutely, yeah, I mean. Then you should been, stay in I've your been, parents' I, home from my perspective because you and Sheila can do real, real good stuff together. Let her focus on her studies. You build your fucking business. You'll have plenty of times to live in an apartment together. Facts. Mm -hmm. But I could be 100% wrong, but that's my belief. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree. I think I agree. I just, it was. Um, you just need a Russ to you tell know, you. <laughs> you needed me to tell you to get rid of your girl. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Let's go to one more thing. Russ, what else is on your mind? What do, what do you want all these entrepreneurs, young hustlers to be thinking about, to know? How you think about your project? Your yeah. new project's phenomenal. Thank you. How are you thinking about that? Like, what, give I us think people stuff. need to uh, listen to their passion more. And a lot of people say, well, I don't know what my passion is. How do I find it? You find it by paying attention to yourself. And you find it by listening to what makes you the most enthusiastic when you think about it. And then just go towards it. Start there. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people are so terrified to face themselves because of fear of rejection you know, and funny. criticism I've and always, weirdo shit. I've always been asked that for a decade now. I just thought of something while you were talking. This is the most cliche thing. He's 100% right. Take a one week off from whatever you do, school or work, and do stuff. Whatever the fuck you're doing, just prove to yourself it's the shit that you want to be doing. Build around that. Yeah. If you're cooking, if you're working out, if you're making music, if you're trying to sell stuff, like I totally agree with you, but it yeah. doesn't feel practical. Everybody's watching right now and like easy for those two fucking guys to yeah, say, right. except not when we did it 15, 20 right. years ago. My thing is like, it's easier said than done, but if it can be said, it can be done. And the problem is that a lot of people have like this terrible seed planted in their head from society or teachers or whatever the fuck it was, saying that certain passions are unrealistic. So when you actually ask someone, oh, what's your passion? They know it instantly, but they instantly also write it off because they've been told it doesn't make enough money, there's not enough jobs in that market, and it's not realistic. So then they move on to plan F and wonder why they hate their lives. The number you have dialed is not in service. That's who. Um, I fundamentally agree with that. It's never been more practical for that to happen because the internet is now the middleman. Right. Like your story and my story is literally the cliche story of crush it. Like because the internet came along, you didn't have to get, you didn't have to move to LA and be discovered by some guy right. or gal that put you on. You went to the consumer and built Directly. the leverage yeah. to then pick and choose how you wanted it. Right. Who's this? Aaron? Hello? Aaron, you're on the Ask Gary V Show with Russ. Get the fuck out of here. Thank you. Is this you're Gary? It is Gary. You need to turn off your computer oh. too. We can hear each other in the background. <laughs> can you, you hear it now? Hell yeah, Aaron. How are you? I'm doing great. The fucking 
amazing to be on the fucking show. Oh, my best of language. It's amazing to be on the show. Thank you, Gary. My pleasure, man. What's your question? Um, my question basically is more geared to Russ, if he doesn't mind getting All good. personal. But yeah, get personal, Russ. What up, Russ? I'm That's a big good. fan. Thank you, bro. Um, no problem, bro. Um, basically, basically, what is your well? If you don't mind sharing, what was your strategy from going from like zero followers on social media to getting to like nine hundred six thousand and over? If you don't mind sharing. Yeah, it was literally put out as much shit as possible at a high level, like quality and quantity. They always said, oh, you have to pick uh, quality over quantity. I was like, why can't you just do both? Why can't you have high quality and high quantity? And that's kind of what broke the fucking system. That's what did it is that, you know, it, the first song I put out didn't get a million plays in the first day. The second song didn't either. The 50th one didn't either. But on the 98th one, it did. You know what I'm saying? Was it actually so, 98 or are you just kind of spitballing numbers? Yeah. Okay. Got yeah. It. I think it's 98, 99, some shit like that. But uh, content is key. Just put out a shit ton of shit. It just has to be good. Does that make sense you to you, my doubt. man? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Russ. No problem. <laughs> That guy is the best guy we've ever faced. <laughs> man, basically fell asleep at, like during the call. Yeah, it's interesting that you, I was listening to you talk. Literally, basically, that's basically all I said to you at dinner the other night. Even though you're now Russ, yeah. more, not less. Yeah. Like it's, cra- I really believe in it. Me too. it. I really believe in it so, so much. My whole point to you was, and what I see from afar that makes you slightly different than the other people I admire in the game right now, I just think you have it in you. It's the reason I pump out content every day. Yeah. I just think I can. I think talent. <laughs> right. it, the, the advice we give on this is a little tricky because most people don't have the talent to right. do it. Right. Like most people have a song or two in them. M- like, let me phrase. Most people have zero songs in them. Right. But that's like, why you Mike need Boyd's to. Mike Boyd's got zero songs in him. <laughs> but that's why you need to go away. You know what I'm saying? Like I had to like tell myself, okay, I'm not putting out shit until I have 50. Did you teach yourself? To sing and rap, you think like like yeah. you think I can learn to rap because I feel like I want to, <laughs> but every but I can't. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like kind of like it's kind of like uh, it just it's kind of using like my left hand instead of my right hand in basketball. I don't have the muscle. Yeah. Is it a muscle that one can be taught? Uh, What's your I gut? Think, I don't know. I, no, I think if you have rhythm and flow, you can be like given words to say. Yeah, right. I definitely do not have rhythm and flow. Yeah. But when I speak in like. A context of like a keynote or rant or do this interview I do but for some reason when music's interjected like I'm like get, I can't do that yeah it's not for everyone it's upsetting <laughs> give me one more I'm just gonna keep Russ here for a minute alright Russ what, what else is popping in culture I, one of the things I respect and love about you is I think you hack culture I think you've got culture in you I think yeah. much like rhythm what I do feel is I understand culture I can yeah. synthesize it that I have yeah. rhythm and flow with I think you do as well what, what else are you seeing maybe outside of hip hop or deep 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 in hip hop like what's kind of emerging one or the other outside of it that you're intrigued by something that's happening in country something that's happening in sports something that's happening in fashion or what's like on the real early stages in hip hop that you're like huh Curious if that's gonna manifest into mainstream. I see the kids doing this, or I was at the mall the other day and saw this, or at my show I saw some kid wearing a fucking garage. I think hip hop uh, is just becoming more and more accepting, and it's also becoming, it already is, it's the biggest shit in the world. And so now, you know, it's curious, I'm just curious to see like how it ages. We've never really seen the 60 year old rapper. We have the Mick Jaggers and the fucking. Yeah. You know, Bruce Springsteen's and Bon Jovi's. So is that why you watch Jay-Z carefully over the next 10, 15 years to see how that manifests? Absolutely, because he's the one that's like, he's paving the way. Yep. Completely. Yep. It's going to be interesting. We're sorry. You're caulking. Come on, ADK. Um, Atlanta. Yeah. I want to talk about it for a second while Andy Mm. tries to actually dial a number. (laughs) You know, now the movie studios are down there. Yeah. I mean, it is these, uh, you, for me, actually you and what Coach K and that whole crew were doing and 21 Savage and all the things that were happening, I was like, wow, there's an enormous metro, like there's enormous talent flowing out of there. To yeah. your point, different. Yeah. It's one thing when like everybody was like gangster rap in LA or like, or what was happening on the East Coast. Do you, do you, but being part of that scene, since you guys are in clearly number one, are you like almost dismissive of the rest of the market? Not to start like a fuck everybody else. Dismissive of the rest of the Atlanta it, market? Is it kind of just like, no, 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 the rest of the market. Like, oh. do you, are you, as you look around and you're, 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 you're dismissive of everybody because you're competitive. Yeah. But 
Like, is it like, is there a flavor in Atlanta in general? Like, wow, everybody else is absolutely second rate. The same way Silicon Valley thinks every other tech place is second rate. The same way that Hollywood thinks every other entertainment place is second rate. Well, I think Atlanta probably does look like, yo, no one's fucking with us right now. But at the same time, I think regionalism is dead because the internet blurred all the lines on a map. Everyone is neighbors. You know what I'm saying? So there's no more like. I mean, yeah, you still sound like you're from LA or you can sound like you're from Atlanta or whatever the fuck it is, but there's kids in Sweden who sound like they're from Atlanta and that's because they're actually from the internet and the internet is everything, so. What what music, if any, yeah. have you listened to or liked outside of the genre of hip hop in the last year or two recently? Oh, I listen to so much shit outside of, uh, outside of I love um, this girl named Chelsea Cutler. She's so dope. Just her- her voice? She's so dope. She writes the craziest songs. Like, she has these songs from when she was 17 or something, like, that she completely doesn't, like, believe that they're amazing. And I'm like, these are the greatest songs ever. I love it. Who's yeah. this? Kevin. Kevin? All right, let's end with Kevin. Then we'll let Russ ask the question of the day of everybody. Beautiful. Yeah, hello? Kevin, you're on the Ask Gary V show with Russ. I'm good. <laughs> I didn't totally ask you yet. <laughs> I'm good. I'm not going to this. <laughs> oh, really? I'm going to pass. I'm good. Uh, I'm okay. out. Kevin. I've been trying to get on this show. Well, you picked a hell of a fucking day. How are you? Dude, I'm I'm good. Thank you. How are you guys doing? It's good, good. good. We're still good. I tweeted, I, tweeted about the, I tweeted that you should get Russ on the show back in May. Legendary. And Appreciate that. You're fucking Nostradamus, yeah, baby. Dude, this, this shit is so awesome, but... I mean, my question is, because I know you're, you're holding him over, but my question <laughs> I'm is... I'm holding him you... hostage. He ain't leaving. Personal <laughs> concerts for life. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, so how, how do you, both of you guys, I mean, how do you guys gain that self-belief and self-confidence, you know, at the, at the start of your career to be so successful? Because, I mean, in Russ, in your, your booklet and your album, you talk about how it's so imperative to be confidence and have yeah. the belief to be successful. You want me to tell, like, honestly, the truth is you have to be born with it. Or number two, how you can kind of curate it is you run directly headfirst at fear, like wildly crazy at fear. Like if you're scared to go on stage, go on stage. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards, you're going to be less scared and then do it again. If you're scared to go up to the girl and talk to her, go up to the girl and talk to her. Like anything you're scared of, you can actually just attack it. And then right, the fear you can just sit there and be like, fuck it, I'll do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just like your song, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, that is what I meant. Uh, you know, I think, I think. Look, I think here's here's what I think. There's another there's another thing that I believe, which is parents do it. My mom did it for me. My mom gassed me up so much. Like I'll never forget being four foot eleven, freshman year of high school. Like second part of it, like almost into sophomore year, four foot eleven dude in high school, right? like greasy long mm-hmm. fucking hair because everybody was mulleting back in 89. <laughs> yeah. And there was something that happened. I was like, wait a minute. I'm not the best looking guy on earth. Like my mom had me so <laughs> delusional. Like I thought I was the best at everything. I still weirdly carry that. Like like parents can absolutely do it. Yeah. Born with it, absolutely. Head and fear can do it. Now, yeah, if yeah, you... But see, and the, thing, the thing for me is like exactly my parents. I mean, I'm growing from, got an Asian heritage background and what they do is like they tell us a lot, like, "Oh no, don't do that, and don't do this." You know, like that's they, why you're scared. Like, Facts. Yeah. That's why you're scared, and that. And now I'm gonna get to the point, and you actually made it better. I appreciate you jumped in there because you're gonna make my point even better. So now we just talked about three things. So cool, you're sitting at home watching Gary Vee and Russ right now, and you're like, "Okay, be born with it. Can't do that, right? Run into mm-hmm. fear. Most pe- like 99% won't do it. That's why it's called fucking fear." <laughs> Right? Number three, your yeah. parents could have done it when you were a kid. You're sitting here like, cool, but my parents were immigrants and said go to school, or my parents were miserable and didn't want me to succeed because misery loves company. So now you're sitting exactly. here listening to this and saying, cool, it's nice that these guys were sitting here, but fuck these three things they came up with. And here's the fourth and the only one that I've ever seen in my eyes happen, and it is such a big fucking deal, and it's perfect because I love the way these four, part of this crew, interact with each other, and I watched them the other night very carefully on this issue. Here's the fucking answer for all of you of the one thing you can do. Surround yourself with people that gas each other up. Facts. Surround your, the biggest, the only thing you can control is who the fuck you hang out with. And if you're hanging out with three kids, and they are all like, we're never gonna get out of town, we're never gonna get out of this town, Dude, what are you talking about? You're gonna have a fucking hit song or you're gonna start a startup. You're gonna fucking work at the factory just like the three of us, just like our dads did, and we're all gonna fucking die here. You need to get those fucking people out of your life. 
You need to, I talk about, I don't talk about it a lot. I talk about cutting your most loser friend, yeah, gaining no, your I've most. Yeah, I've been doing that ever since watching your show. So you've cut out some friends? Yeah, no, I cut out some friends. Like now, like, I mean, everyone, all my, those, those friends back in the day now, like, I mean, I'll talk to them here and there, but like, per- exactly. they still party and stuff and they think I'm a loner. But I mean, I'm over here trying That's to do my beautiful. thing, just listening to Russ and then watching you, man. He <laughs> me up. So wait a minute. Now that there's one last part, because we're your virtual friends, and that's right. Yeah. That's right. But yeah. you need to add one or two per- people that are actually physically around you that are in the same spot as you. Right. What me and Russ were 15, 10, 15, 20 years ago. You need to find that person, and they're there. So many people. Fucking leave a comment right now in the fucking comments on, on Facebook. They're all there. Facts. Man. Appreciate it so much, guy. I mean, it's, it's like it's like Boogus to Russ and then D-Rock to you. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> it's That's real. Love it. See ya. D-Rock, don't get excited. You're not my, you're not my best friend. <laughs> but you're a dear friend. And I love you very much. All right, Russ, question of the day. Uh, you get to ask any question. This is a good opportunity for you and your team to maybe get 1,000, 2,000 answers to maybe something that's curious, something strategic, or just kind of something funny or funny or what have you. Question of the day, go. I asked the question. Yes, sir. To who? To the fucking audience. Another thing real quick, you need to start watching this fucking show because then you would know the guests fucking <laughs> asked the question. I'm not listening to any of your shit anymore until you watch more shows. Go. Uh, what's my question? Mm-hmm. Um, Think of it as a focus group or be silly or maybe there's something curious or maybe you guys are debating something. Like, What's just a question about like, what are people interested in? What, how do they consume music? Where do they consume music? Or what gear are they wearing? Or what how shoes amazing, are they like? How amazing do you think my debut album is? Went real selfish, huh? Yes. Respect. The <laughs> man. I really enjoyed it. Thank really you. Really good seeing you. You keep asking questions, we'll keep answering them. Yeah.